Well, hello everybody, this is Etho, and we are once again back for another episode of Project Ozone 2. My super suit is still in the washing machine, that's why we're in the old gear here. Not because I had an accident or anything like that, it just got worn out, okay, it needed a repair. Uh, last episode, guys, we made some major strides here. So we got this uh, energy condenser, we have unlocked EMC in Project Ozone, and today we are going to use it and we're going to abuse it. <laughs> uh, so now we got to figure out exactly what to do with it. So first thing we're going to do, one of our biggest EMC uh, givers is Nether Stars here, 147,000 each one. So we use that as our fuel, basically. We throw it in here, and it can create whatever we put in the slot up here. Um, which also has an EMC value, 37,000 for each of these. So first thing we're going to do, we, we need some project, or some uh, frozen cores here. All right, and now we're going to make some alchemical chests. Put that up there. Oh man, it's making a lot. <laughs> and uh, what we want to do, we only have one of those energy condensers. We want to get at least two or more. Um, and rather than crafting the whole thing again here, well, we're going to do it once, but beyond that, now if we want more of these, we basically put it up here, give it enough uh, EMC to do its thing, and we'll make a few extra. Three, maybe let's go for four, just so we have them. All right, so I thought uh, maybe let's look at some of the rules of this EMC, how we're, how we're going to use it, and what we can't do with it. Uh, so by and large, I think the item that gives us the most is going to be these octuple compressed cobblestones, 43 million each one. They are, of course, very difficult to produce. Other than that, I think nether stars are our go-to item. They're 147,000. And looking at a few different things, emeralds are another close choice, 147,000 per block. And I think diamonds are a little bit less, 73,000. Yeah, so it's it's either going to be cobblestone or nether stars, I think. We can produce both of those easily, um, either in our farm or for the nether stars or with our uh, cobblestone framework uh, setup we did last episode. Now, here's the thing, though, with this EMC. I think any item that has EMC values can be duplicated, like these jeweled apples. But, for example, this doesn't have an EMC value, so I think... That is an item we can't duplicate. Yeah, it doesn't even go up there. So not everything can be duplicated. There's certain mods, it seems, that can't. So anything in Botania, for example, doesn't have an EMC value. We can't duplicate it. And likewise, anything in Draconic Evolution I saw is a no bueno. <laughs> and that's one of the tougher mods. So yeah, we can't cheat our way through it or anything like that. That's, that's one we're going to actually have to do this stuff. But other than that, a lot of things... Reliquary seems to have it. Um, another big thing... Actually, very big thing, I should say. Ingots. Most ingots have an EMC value. Um, so, for example, if I want Mercury or Palladium or something, I don't have to go to the different planets to, to mine it now. We can just create it, which will be a huge time saver. Neutronium ingots don't have a value. Okay, that's interesting. What about Mobius? Mobius are pretty easy to make. I think we need these raw meat ingots, actually. <laughs> it looks like we can't create them. Darn. So a lot of the tough stuff we still have to do the right way. Yeah, this is something we need. All right, here's something else I've noticed with the EMC values that's pretty interesting. Like, generally speaking, the more ingredients to craft something, the more the EMC value is in the end. So this is 7,800, for example. That's way more than like one of these iron ingots because it takes a bunch of these to craft it, right? Makes sense. But for some things, look at this diamond furnace, <laughs> 51,000. Uh, you actually lose a lot of value when you combine it with or process it or do things with it. And here's another really good example. So this compressed cobblestone, for example, 43 million. You can take that turn it into, uh, where is it? Yeah, one of these block of bedrock, you know, reduces the cost by like 43 times or 50 times or whatever. Kind of interesting, right? 
And that actually uh, caught my attention because we were trying to get those uh, octuples and stuff to make bedrock when in reality we should just duplicate it. <laughs> it's probably a lot cheaper this way, right? So I think that's what we're going to do. I think this is what we need. Yeah, look at that. Like one nether star per bedrock can get way cheaper. And then we take that. Oh, it makes these. That's right. Okay. So we need we need a bit of bedrockium. We're going to finally make that portal to the deep dark, I think. Because we're not going to smelt down our octuple. That's stupid. We lose a lot of value if we do it that way, as we saw. So we're going to craft it with our EMC thing. Let's go for 14, sure. Then I think think we take three of those, make bedrock. Should we duplicate the bedrock just so we have it? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it, just in case we need it later for some crazy thing. Uh, it's going to be about one stack of nether stars. Okay, just want one extra piece for, for later here. And now I think we can do the portal to the deep dark, which is one of our quests we've been trying to do forever here. Oh, yeah, we do need four octuples. Oh, octuple. Head over to our QED station here, bedrock in the middle, and I forget the other ones. So I'm going to take a guess. <laughs> there we go, we got it. And we just need one of these, I'm pretty sure. So let's head back up here. We will put this away so we can, st we can move again. It gives you like slowness uh, four. It's pretty bad. Okay, throw that in there. I guess they're heavy too. And we will set this up. Got to be careful. I got the a different jetpack on. <laughs> got to learn how to use it again. Uh, oh, before we place it, let's finish the quest. All right, to the deep dark. It gives us... Sojourner's Staff, Lantern of Paranora, Para... Oh, those are, that's one of those words I have trouble saying. Paranora... Paranoia. Paranoia. I'm a genius. Paranoia. <laughs> Paranoia. 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 Paranoid is no trouble for me. Paranora. Oh. Par... <laughs> Why... <laughs> Why am I having so much trouble with this? Paranoia. Not e a. Paranoia. Paranoia. Four syllables. Got it figured out. Okay, let's move on with our lives. And pretend that never happened. Uh-huh. Alright, let's open up our reward bag. Alright guys, so we're gonna go check out the deep dark here. Just making a whole bunch of torches. We are charging up our Sojourner staff. Oh, 1,500 is the max. Okay. Uh, what this does is it lets you place torches at a distance, basically, wherever you're looking. So now it's at 1,493. It costs extra if it's long distances. That's why we placed three and lost, like, seven there. Then we shift-right-click to charge it up again. It'll take it out of our, our inventory here. Uh, this thing apparently places torches in unlit areas automatically, so that's perfect for the deep dark here. Because if you're in a dark area, you get killed. <laughs> you just right click this thing? I don't remember. Yeah, right click. Okay, so this is like a mining dimension. There's a lot of good ores here. But it's pretty dangerous. So we got to be careful. I got our good armor on. And hopefully we don't crash. I think we're good. Okay, did it place these torches or do they spawn naturally? I can't remember. Gotta find our way down. Oh, look at that! That is so cool! <laughs> so that's what the lantern does. Just automatically places torches constantly. I really like that, actually. Okay. Oh, we're out of food. Whoa! And we have found our way down here. Okay, let's not get lost. How tr how tricky will that be? Kind of ride our way down the column here. Oh, we got... Uh, I think those are the air blizzes, right? <laughs> it's so cool. It's the trail of torches wherever you go. Uh-huh. 
And if I remember right, you can find these holes that go down. And that's usually where a bunch of ores are. Doesn't look like we're taking damage if we move quickly like that. That's good. Um, so far, nothing. Eh? Okay, we got artifact uh, houses down here. If we look on the map, can we see anything? No, not really. Okay, option B will be to mine, I guess. Let's try dig a hole here ourselves and just see what comes up. Oh yeah, we can, we can find ores anywhere, basically. Alright. So, all the normal overworld ores will be here. Uh, ideally, you'd probably use the mining machine anyways, not manually mining like this. Oh, there's dense ores too! Oh, okay, that's something special then. Huh. All our dense ores we made with our pneumatic craft compressor, so we kind of moved beyond that. But if I'd known that earlier, <laughs> might have actually been worth coming here sooner. Uh, not seeing any, like, out-of-the-world ores, like, from other planets or anything like that. It's just the standard stuff by the looks of it. So I don't think this is going to be a super useful dimension zinc ore, but we can duplicate that now with our... Uh, energy condenser, so yeah, I don't think we really need anything here actually, but it's kind of cool to check it out Yeah, so here we go guys We are gonna try to automate the energy condenser here because we'll probably be using it a lot and We want to save time. So we're gonna try to hook it up to the ME system. We will move this You know, I never even checked if I could break it with the pick <laughs> I heard that glass out and it freaked me out I guess we got lucky there. We didn't lose it. Uh, we'll put this where it was, and let's see here. My plan with this, maybe we'll grab a mini chest, actually. Can we do that? Something with a small inventory. And let's put that, like, right here. I think that works. If we, if we hook a transfer node up to this... And we're going to speed upgrade this so it'll be quick. And this will be for nether stars, basically. Yeah, it looks like it pulls them out of there. Good. Uh, and then we will rationing pipe to our energy condenser. So at any given time, it can only put up to one stack in there. And if it uses up the fuel... Yeah, look how quick it replaced it. So that's good. Uh, of course, we only had two stacks in there, so now it's empty. So we want to hook uh, our... Our ME system up to that mini chest, probably with an export to bus. So let's head around there. Whoa. Oh, too far down. Look at this mess. Who designed this thing? Uh, okay, so if we export, uh, we'll put it over here, I guess. Tell it to only put nether stars in. Accelerate it. Okay, and then we'll hook that up to our ME system here, so that'll keep it fed. And then we got to take the items out of here and put them into the ME system. And I, you know, I tried looking for like a reverse import bus. Is there any way to blacklist items with an import bus? Because I don't know how to. So I think we have to use Enter IO cables instead. Just so we can get that feature. <laughs> um, unless I'm just missing it. We don't want it to connect up here. Disable. So we're going to put uh, item filter into our item conduit here. We'll speed upgrade it. We want to blacklist nether stars so they don't get pulled. Oh, it is there. So it doesn't get pulled out of the, the condenser here. And then I guess we'll hook it up to the interface then. Okay, so that'll put it into the ME storage. Then we just got to connect the cable up here. And do it in a way where we don't get trapped down there. <laughs> okay, I think that's all good once we connect here, right? Kind of a mess. Is that going to work? Is it going to confuse the system? I'm having so much trouble with the cables on this thing not working. I think that's good. And, you know, we could probably actually just make it 
pull out of here and use one channel only, right? That's probably smarter. So we put a full stack there. Let's get rid of this this part. I think it's a mistake. Break that. We'll use item conduits instead. That will be inserts. Pull out of here. Okay. Do we have to tell it to only take nether stars? Here, let's look at the chest. If we do that. I guess it's not hooked up to the system, right? So let's hook it up. So we can test this. And yeah, so it's putting nether stars in. That's very good. That's what we want. It is slow though, so let's speed this up. Okay. Yeah, one stack at a time now. That's good. And it'll Did we connect to the to that? Yeah, we did. So I think we're all good now. Let's go test it out, see if it works. So we should, in theory, be able to put whatever we want up here and it will create it. And not go into storage. <laughs> Why doesn't it work, guys? What's going on? Um, did I miss something? Let's go down here again. Just double check what we did. Oh. No, look at that. That should be on inserts. Okay, now the dirt's out, right? Oh, yeah, I think we got it working. Oh. Wait a second. It's working, right? We stop it. Oh, it only seems to be able to transfer while it's running. That's odd. Is that going to be a problem? Probably not, right? Because... Like a little little bit will get stuck in there, but then the next time we craft something. Oh. <laughs> it's gonna get jammed up eventually. Hmm. Well I'm not too sure what to do about that, guys. But I decide let's add two more energy condensers here. So for example, if I want to create like tons and tons of mercury, we can leave this running. And I don't have to worry, oh, I'm making mercury right now. I can still use one of these other ones. Um so that'll be good. No waiting time. And it was pretty easy to add two more. You just two more rationing pipes here and two more item conduits here. Still only one channel. Pretty nice. So let's try to make this look a little bit better. <laughs> there it is. I was looking for that. Okay. Do that. Do that. And then we'll just move this other stuff forward one more. So that'll go there like it was. That there and that there. And you know what, guys? We're going to make something that we are long overdue for here. <laughs> we need an ender diamond, chassis, and quartz. Oh, and it went into the system. Or no. No, it's there. Did I not see it or did it disappear? Now, now I want to watch the footage back. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll just throw it over here. And do we have any power cables on us? We do. Check that out. Perfect. Okay, it's got power. Yeah, just to make things a little bit nicer around here. Oh, I wanted to turn that. I guess that doesn't work. So we put in our facades and tell it what block we want it to be. I think we want three. Let's go ahead and speed upgrade that too. We'll grab a capacitor. All right, because it seems pretty slow. Throw that there. Cool. Grab three of these, and now we can place them wherever we have... Oh. Oh, I see how it works. <laughs> uh, you just need one of the, the wood in there. We can place it wherever we have the Ender I.O. conduits now. So put that there. 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 Look a little bit nicer, maybe. All right. Very good, very good. Okay, so next thing, guys. Let's check this out now. We are down to... 5,800 nether stars. So we're using them up fairly quickly, actually. Uh, what we're going to do is shut down, not dismantle, but we'll just disable this for right now, the Temperio maker. The main reason we needed Temperio was to make demon steel. And it turns out it has an EMC value, right? <laughs> so if we want demon steel, it's a lot easier just to use energy condensers. And instead of growing... Minicio to be converted into Temperio, 
and then convert it into demon steel, which is very, very slow, by, mind you. Uh, what we're going to do is grab nether stars and head over to our farm. I think we're going to remove like all the municeal plants and replace them with uh, nether star plants. Hmm. Okay, I made one mistake here. I was planting them, right? I switched out all the municeal plants with nether star seeds. It's like, wait a second. They're not growing. What's going on here? <laughs> we need awakened draconium under each of these plants. That's the one little catch to this, I guess. Uh, we'll get him here anyways. So, yeah, look at this thinking, by the way. This is this is what my thoughts are on this. So we had municeal plants here these seeds here producing municeal essence and each of these essences is worth roughly 25 emc or exactly 25 emc in value when you compare that to what a nether star plant produces these green things uh, nine of them makes a nether star so that's like 16,000 something emc for each of these that's way more than 25, right? <laughs> That's why uh, it's it's a good idea to switch out the farmland to make it as profitable as possible uh, now that we have the energy condensers. And I'll probably even get rid of all these metals here once we once we can. But I guess we got to get some awakened draconium then for that idea to work. I didn't even th I didn't even realize that was a problem, which means we got to kill the dragon a whole bunch of times. I guess is the next thing here. Okay, so this is where things get tricky, I guess. Remember how I said you can't use EMC with Draconic Evolution stuff? We need to set this up to summon the Ender Dragon so we can kill it to get the hearts to make Awakened Draconium for the Nether Star Seeds. But in order to do this, we need this purple block in the middle, a Resurrection Stone. Still following me? Okay, let's go up here. <laughs> it's kind of a long-winded thing here. Um... Resurrection oh I missed. Resurrection stone here, the purple thing. Requires draconium, not a big deal, we got that. But it also requires these mob souls. Mob souls you notice that with draconic weapons you can now occasionally steal the souls of the things you kill. It's very rare though. Um, this is something we did in Sky Factory. We found out there's an enchantment you can get for the weapons. But you can also put any enchantment you want on diamond spikes. And those count as player kills. Anything that dies on these. So we're going to steal one of these out of our mob system. And that should have went into the ME system. If the vacuum chest got it. Diamond spike. Yeah. This has an EMC value, thankfully. Otherwise, it's a real pain to craft. <laughs> uh, we're going to take that. We're going to put it over here. Make a few of them. Alright, and let's go put that one back that we borrowed. So now we got to get the enchantment. I forget what it's called. Let's look up enchantments, maybe. Enchantments. No, it's not going to show it there. Book. So I can't find any enchantments in our NEI, so I think they're hidden or something. Uh, and I checked this out. It's not in here either. And I think if we just enchant books randomly, we won't get it. I think we have to enchant... Draconic swords. Oh, let's uh, let's get that back on. So let's make some draconic weapons. Draconic. Uh, I think this is what we want here. Sword of the Wyvern. Looks like it's going to work good. So let's make four of these. We'll enchant them and just see what we get. I don't remember the name of the enchantment. This is the crazy thing. So first one, we got looting, smite, knockback. None of those are what we want. So we got to try again. Next sword. Smite, looting, flim flam, fire aspect. None of those either. Okay. Uh, sharpness, flim flam, knockback. We gotta get lucky with this. No, none of those are good. Okay, so instead of making more swords, can we just strip the enchantments off of this? Let's try that out. Throw that in there. Yeah, it looks like it's going to go. Oh, Reaper 5. Yes. Okay, so we got Reaper 5. We have Reaper 4 on that one. Might as well uh, enchant the rest of these in case we want to make more than one spike. 
And last one. Reaper 4 again. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. So now what we got to do is get the Reaper enchantment off of the sword using this thing. Oh, books stay in. Oh, what are they doing? What are they doing? Go over there. <laughs> uh, we want Reaper 5 off of here, so we'll take that one first. Okay, so go over here and spike plus sharpness for 8 levels, and we'll add looting 14 and reaper is it not using the enchantments oh is this not disappearing okay reaper is going to cost 25 we can do that not a big deal head back over here okay that's good and last one i don't think there's anything else we'd want to add to that but that is one expensive spike <laughs> uh i guess that one we'll put over here actually Oh, we're not killing them with the spikes anymore. We're using the grinder. Okay, we're going to put this back, I guess. And stop using the grinder. Okay, I think that'll work. So now, like zombies and some of the other mobs will drop mob souls when they get killed on that. We'll have to shut off the grinder and maybe pick up the drops somehow. Come on. Come on, I'm stuck. I'm actually stuck. Oh, here we go. Yes, I'm free. Oh, careful. Careful. Okay, so there is actually a vacuum hopper here. It's just invisible for some reason. And below that, we will put down a chest. Whoa, that's weird. Why is that invisible too? Something is, is messed up here, I tell you. Okay, so we want to output down into the chest. Good. And then we want that item conduit to pull the stuff out. And then it should go up in here. All right? I think we're good. Uh, and then if we want to shut the grinder off, which we do right now, we can just use a lever, I'm pretty sure. And that stops it from working. Okay. You see, yeah, you see that floating zombie there? That's a mob soul. Why is it still stuck in there, though? Because the vacuum hopper's overloaded? Oh, I got stuck in the corner again. <laughs> oh, I can just go right through. Um, for some reason... Let's just check this. No, it's empty. Why can't the vacuum hopper pick stuff up? Like, it's right next to that. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Okay. Oh, it's because the fans are pushing it. That's what it is. So the fans are overpowering the vacuum hopper. Oh, okay. Let's move the vacuum hopper to the other side, I guess. Again, we got the invisible thing going on here. <laughs> but there's a vacuum hopper there on this side as well. And we will aim that down, I think. Okay, and then we will item conduit our way over to here. I guess. A little bit messy, but it'll work. Okay, so now all that stuff should go out into the ender chest here. That's all good. And then we'll try to seal this up again in case there's baby zombies we don't want them getting out. Oh yeah, vacuum hopper's blocking that. And... One more right there. Okay, that should be good. That should be all good now. Put this back here. Let's just check this out real quick. How many mob souls do we have? We got two already. That's not bad. Cool. So we need four of these for each resurrection stone. Each time we want to get ourselves a dragon heart for, I think, four awakened blocks per dragon heart or something. So we're going to need a lot of them. Oh, is this not picking up XP? Oh, it's full. Okay. Maybe let's put this back down. It'll collect the XP. And then it'll overflow, and then we'll have to think of something else. <laughs> All right. Yeah, do you guys know any other tricks to summoning the Ender Dragon, I guess? Because uh, we we're going to need quite a few hearts. This will get us a few, but we got to do it all manually, right? I've seen, like, with RF tools, people somehow 
spawn the dragon in with the dimension, which might be something we look into, or is there a way of doing it with spawners? I don't know. We need lots of dragons though for pumping out the nether stars in our farm. But anyways, guys, I think uh, we're out of time here for today's episode, so hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, as always. And until next time, take care, have a good day, bye-bye.